Hey everyone, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to use the date time string parsing and the date time date formatting. So we're going to start off with parsing, meaning we're going to take these dates here that are just strings and we're going to convert them to date time objects. So I already have date time imported. So from date time, import date time. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take each one of these dates and create a date time object out of them. So first I have this website open, uh, stir ftime.org and it basically has all the things you need to know to either parse a date or format a date. So these are just directives that tell datetime what is at a particular position in the string. So for example, if I look at percent uh, lowercase m, we see it says month as a zero padded decimal number. So anything in that position is going to be treated as a month. If it's an actual day or a year, then it's not going to work correctly. So you have to make sure the directives are correct. So I'll show you how to use these. So we have these three dates and I want to convert them to daytime objects. So I'll just say date one object and I'll do the same for the other two. So the first thing I need to do is use daytime and then I'm parsing this. So I'm taking a string and I'm converting it to a daytime object. So I'm parsing the string. So I use the method called stir p time. So S T R P T I M E. And it takes in two values. So the first value is the actual date string. So date one in this case. And the second is the string of the format of the date. So I'll start with a string. And the first thing I need to put in is the month. So I have the month June here. This is the month spelled out. So if I go to this site and look for the month, I see September as an example. And the meaning is month as locale's full name. So that's exactly what I want. And the code is percent capital B. So case matters. So percent B. And then there's a space here. So anything that is not part of the date, but it's just a part of the format of the string, you're going to reflect that in your format string here. So I'm going to put a space. So we have the month and then we have a space followed by the day. So let's take a look here. And what we're looking for is day of the month as zero padded decimal number. So it doesn't necessarily need to be zero padded. I noticed that percent D works more than percent dash D. So just use percent D when it comes to days of the month. So that's the next thing that I put in. So percent D followed by a comma. So the comma isn't a part of the actual date. It's just the format and then the year. So the year is going to be percent capital Y. Okay. So now let's print this out and run the script. So this is date one object. And we see it's been converted to this format. So this is actually the string representation of a daytime object. So if I do something like print type, and we do that again, we see it's a daytime object. But when we print directly, it ends up as a string just for readability purposes. So it is a daytime object, but when we print it, it converts it to a string automatically because of the stir method on the daytime class. So if we were to change this a little bit, so instead of June, let's say December and run this again, we see the month here. So 12 is the month and six is the month here. So by just changing the name of the month, the daytime object reflects that change. So now let's do the other two. So day two object. So daytime, and we're going to parse the time. So this one's a little different. So this one can be two different things depending on where you live. So in the United States, this is August 10th. And in some other countries, this is actually October 8th. So it depends. So let's go with August 10th first. So we start off with the month. So let's look for month, which is a uh, percent M lowercase M followed by a slash, which is a part of the format. And then we have the day, which is similar to here. So percent D and then we have the year in two digits. So this is the year 2029. So if we look here, a year without century as zero padded decimal number. So percent Y lowercase. So percent Y and then let's just print that out. So this one we see 2029 August 10th. So if we switch this format a little bit, 
and we put the day first and then the month second and we run this, now we see it is October 8th, 2029. So for the last date, this one actually has a time in it, but it's a similar process. So date three object is date time, stir p time, and then date three. And we're going to first get the date. So we have month, then day. So percent M dash percent D. So the dashes are just part of the formatting. And then percent capital Y because we have the year with the century. And now we have the time. So this is 24 hour time. So 12, 23, and then three seconds past the minute. So we're going to look for the hour first. So the hour is capital H for 24 hour clock. So capital H and note the space in between the year and the beginning of the time because there's a space here. And then there's a colon. And then we have the minute. So the minute is going to be capital M. So percent capital M followed by the second. And the second is percent capital S. And if we print this out, so date three object, we'll see we have not only the date here, but we have the time on that date. And the other ones, they just default to midnight because we didn't supply a time. So now let's format these back to a certain string. So to do that, it's a similar process. So instead of calling date time dot stir p time like we did, we're going to actually use the object itself. So date one object, and then we're going to call the method called format. So strf time. So string format time. And this time we just need to pass in a format because we are already starting with the date because we're calling a method on the date time object. So for this one, let's say instead of having December 8th, 2011 like this, we want it to look like this. So we want to put the year first. So percent capital Y space Let's have a comma and then we have percent B and then we'll just have the day. So percent lowercase D and let's go ahead and just print that out. And now we see the year comes first, followed by the month and the day. So, of course, you probably wouldn't do it that way, but if you wanted to, you could. Or if you wanted to do something like this where you just leave out information. So let's take a look at the second one. So we're going to format something. So string F time. And this time we only want the month, just the name of the month. So this one is August. So let's print it out. Actually, it's October because I switched it. So if I switch this back when I parse it, it would be August again, but I didn't change it. So it's just October. So we see October here. If we do the year, then we'll see only the year. So whatever you want, you can leave out information. Of course, you can add more information because date time needs to know. For example, if we tried to add the time, it's just going to be zeros because we didn't supply a time when we first created that particular one. And then finally, an example for date three, format the time. And let's say we will format with um, just the minutes and the seconds. So minutes and seconds. And we can do that. And we see uh, 23 minutes and three seconds. So however you want your dates to look, uh, you can make them look that way using stir F time. And whatever format that the dates come into your app or your script, you can read that into date time using the stir parse time and convert that to a date time, perform any operations you need to perform with it. And you can convert it back to any kind of time format that you want. So I hope this video helps. I'll include a link to this site so you can see all of the codes for the directives. And I'll also include the code here uh, in the description below. So if you have any questions about this, feel free to leave a comment below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. So thank you for watching and I will talk to you next time.